AF can be installed on a single machine or on multiple machines. It could even be installed on the same machine that's running your Pi server. And we'll go over all that. By the way, if you want to actually see an installation, just skip forward to section 2.3.5. It's an exercise at the end of this chapter. We demonstrate installing at that point. So as you can see, a single server like this that's running the Pi server can also be where you install the AF server and your copy of SQL Server that you're using to store the AF SQL database. Now, as you might guess, that's not what we'd recommend for very large systems. Uh, typically, we'd see that for somebody who's got maybe hundreds or thousands of assets to model in AF. Uh, and you'd have to obviously have a, a pretty decent set of hardware to be able to keep up with that, putting all that on one machine. Uh, typically, we see this done for testing purposes, and that's about it, unless it's a really small system with a really mammoth, very, very fast, you know, a robust machine. Uh, now, what we typically, more typically see, instead of everything being on one machine, would be to have the AF server on a dedicated server all its own. You can also install the AF SQL database on that same server, or it could be on a different server, or it actually could be on any copy of SQL server that's available on the network. Now here's what it would look like if you've got the AF server and SQL server installed on one box, one computer, and then you've got that looking at different Pi servers that are on different boxes. Now if you recall, AF can point to more than one server. In fact, that's kind of the whole point. We want a single copy of AF to be kind of an index, a map to all the different assets you've got stored in Pi. Now in order to set up AF on a machine that's got both SQL Server and AF Server on the same machine, you're going to be installing the components in this executable right here, AF Server underscore, and then the version number. Now, please distinguish that from the AF Client. That client is going to install the AF Client. We're installing the AF Server here. And when we do that, you're going to be prompted for, well, where you want to install it, of course. And then the next screen you're going to see is a place where you can choose what's going to be installed. Now, since this is a computer that will have both the AF server and the AF SQL database, and we assume that then, therefore, this is the machine that has Microsoft SQL Server running on it, you're going to choose all the options that you see here uh, when this prompt arises. Now, the next dialog box, it's not pictured right here, but it's going to ask you for the name of the SQL server that you're going to be installing the AF SQL database on. Now, it defaults to SQL Express. Uh, that's, uh, that, of course, is something that you can change to whatever the name of that SQL Server is. If you leave it blank, it'll go to whatever the default uh, SQL Server database is. And once you've specified what the instance of SQL Server you're installing this to is, uh, you should get this confirmation screen. It asks you, are you sure you're going to put all this on the uh, on the specific system, you know, on this particular uh, computer? And once you're satisfied that all this looks good, just go ahead and run the installation. Now, as the installation runs, a couple of things are going to happen. First of all, it's going to install this AF server. So the application server, this AF server, is installed where you indicated. And that's just a typical executable install. Uh, we're also going to install the AF database, the AF SQL database. That's not a typical install. That's simply going to be a series of scripts that are going to execute to build the AF database. So you'll notice that uh, it's going to bring up script execution prompts. Uh, you don't have to respond to them, but you'll just see that it's executing SQL scripts at that point during the installation. And so that's it for uh, installing the AF server and the AF SQL database on the same machine. Let's now take a look at what would happen when you're installing AF server on one computer and the AF SQL database on a second machine Again, that would be the machine that's running Microsoft SQL Server. So what happens when, what do we do when that happens? Well, what we're going to do is run the same executable, but we're going to kind of split where things go during that executable uh, installation. We'll actually run it twice on the different machines. Now, on the machine that's running Microsoft SQL Server, you're simply going to choose to install the AF SQL database plus this script ex execution and PySQL for AF scripts. So those are the things that you're going to choose during that setup. You notice you've X'd out the AF application service. We do recommend that you do it in this order. You install it on the SQL Server box first. So run that AF Server executable over there, that the AF Server install there first, excluding the AF application service at that point. 
Now as this executes, it's going to go ahead and create this AF SQL database on that SQL Server machine. And one of the things that, uh, that needs to be recorded at that point is the name and the location of your actual AF Server machine. So during the installation, you're going to be prompted, you know, what is the name, what is the domain name, and the computer name of the machine that's going to be running the AF Server. So what does this actually do? What are we doing with this server name? Well, as you can see, we describe it right here. What we do with that information is we take that and we add that as a computer that is placed in a group. It's a Windows security group called the AF Servers Group. Now let me switch over to my SQL Server machine. See, this, this is under uh, Computer Management under Local Users and Groups. There is a group that we create during the install called AF Servers. And in this group, we're going to put the name of that computer that you enter right there, the na name and domain. And we do that to facilitate communication between the AF server and this copy of SQL Server. Now you may recognize that this is, well, this is not the best of practices where you're actually granting access to a computer rather than a named user in the domain. So later on, we're going to demonstrate how you can switch that over and in fact allow the connection to be made based on Windows credentials. So go ahead and let that uh, execute. And when that's finished executing, you'll switch over to your other computer. This is the computer that's running the AF server. And on that machine, run the same executable, the AF server executable, except this time you're going to remove the AF SQL database and these other options from the install. Now you're simply interested in installing the AF server executable itself. Before you get to this screen right here, you're going to be prompted for the name of the SQL Server instance uh, to which you installed this AF SQL database. That's what we did in the previous step. Uh, on that other machine, we installed AF SQL database to a SQL Server instance, and that's the instance name that you're going to be prompted for. Now, if you're not real familiar with SQL Server, you can always go out to that computer that you're using uh, for hosting SQL Server, for running SQL Server, open up this SQL Server Management Studio. And typically what you'll find, well, if it's, the, if it's the only one on there, you'll find the server name here that you're connecting to with this Management Studio is the server name you're after. But if, you know, if you have multiple ones, or if, for example, you're in a networked environment, these SQL Server instances, they publish themselves such that you know you can go out and browse for that. So in this case, I would be looking for this right here of all the SQL servers in our, uh, in our own network here. So that's the name, that's the instance name of SQL Server that you're looking for. And, and again, maybe this is belaboring the obvious, but that would be the same instance name that you used previously on that other computer when you installed the AF SQL database.